Well, being a travel writer may appear to be one of the most glamorous jobs in the world, but according to our next guest, it's anything but. After trading in his Wall Street job to be a travel writer, Thomas Konstan found uh, he had one of the lowest paid jobs in the US. So what's it really like in the world of travel writing? Thomas joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Now, you made international headlines recently after admitting to writing a travel story from your desk, right? And then you came out to say it's sort of common practice, is it? Well, it's not an ideal situation, but it is something that happens in the travel writing industry, in the guidebook writing industry. I try to avoid that as much as possible, um, but I was just writing the introduction to a book, and it was understood by both me and my employer that I wasn't to go to the country. Um, okay. uh, how, how common is that? Therefore, like of all these you know, travel stuff that we read, how much should we believe that the guy writing it has actually been there? Well, you know, um, people do their best to have the most accurate research, but the reality is, is that, well, this in particular was a guidebook to Colombia. Not a lot of people are buying guidebooks to Colombia. The budget's pretty low, so people are doing the, the best research they can under the circumstances. Mm. Right. And, and this, when you say under the circumstances, this is about not being paid enough, is it, to, to, to run around and do the research? And well, again, I was writing the introduction, so yeah. it was, the, you know, the environment chapter, food and drink, culture, and I did research uh, through Colombians that I knew in the United States and uh, through the consulate, so it, it, as secondary research, it was, it was actually pretty solid. Uh, yeah, by talking to someone who's been there, as opposed well, to going. I, I have, I have, I have been to Colombia and and in other times. But. Hey, tell us about how you actually found yourself working in travel, because you used to be in Wall Street, right? Well, I was I was a big traveler growing up. My whole family was really into traveling, and we used to do long overland trips in Northern Africa, Europe, and uh, I studied languages starting at about ten years old. So I first started working in phrase books when I was right out of undergrad. And, uh, or uni is, I guess you yeah, call it here. Yeah. So, um, and then I had a path that deviated a little bit, went into different jobs. And it, actually, my book goes through the, the long and tortured path. But uh, yeah, came, came back around to my original love, which was travel. So, Do you get it that everyone thinks this would be the coolest job in the world? We read the stories, we read the books and go, wow, what a great gig. Well, that's, that's really one of the main points of, of the book is, and it follows my path of going from, oh, this is getting, you know, completely idealistic, this is going to be a dream job, to the, the harsh disillusionment that I, that I realized when I found out, okay, it has its problems just like any other job, mm. and uh, the trade-offs that I experienced along the way, and in the end, sort of a hardened pragmatism to just get it done and hit my deadline. Um, hey, hey, in your book it says here, you had sex with a waitress, and then reviewed it as a pleasant surprise and the table service friendly. That's, that, that's, it, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, it's the truth, so... She you know, was friendly. The table service was friendly, I won't, I won't lie about that, so... Just, uh, just giving it to people as it happened. I, I think well, my, my experience in, in travel literature in general is that most of the stories are really earnest and sunny and have happy endings and never really get down to the, uh, the dirty details of what's going on. I just wanted to write something that was frank and honest about the craziness that I experienced along the road, the kind of travel book that I had been looking for in the uh, bookstore and was never able to find myself. So, People must come to you all the time and go, you know, I want, to, I want to do this, I want to follow this path. And what advice do you say to those people? What do you, what do you give them? Um, you know, if, if you have a trust fund or a wealthy spouse, it's maybe a, a good career choice. I think uh, if, if you really love it and you're really willing to make a lot of sacrifices, then, then travel writing is, is a good career, but, or it can be a good career, but it's, it's a real trick and there, there are no guarantees, so mm. it's a little bit of a hustle too. So. All righty. Lots hey, of hustle. Interesting, interesting, very interesting. Thank you very much, Thank Thomas Conestam, for Good to talk to you. Thanks for coming this morning. In. If you'd like to read Thomas Conestam's book, it's called "Do All Travel Writers Go to Hell?" And it's, <laughs> Good and it's out now. Do you, <laughs> did you answer that question in the book? No, that's why it still has a question, <laughs> question mark. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> travel writers. That'll be answered also. in the next book, perhaps. Uh, I'm, thanks. I'm working on that. One, All right. So. Thanks for coming in. Still thanks to come for you this morning. Kai's have been challenged to find a fashionable outfit for a fuller figure, and we're naming the top ten sex mistakes made by men. But next, the news with Ann Sanders, fresh from the red carpet at Indiana Jones. Ooh.